Namaskar, good morning, I'm of at uh, Sun Road, Sophia, Lilendal. It's um, Human Nabi today. And um, I wish to express joyous felicitations to all Guyanese on the uh, Prophet's birthday. Um, actually, um, you know, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, this spiritual significance, you know. Actually, from what I learned, the Prophet Muhammad was born, he came during an era when there was um, a lot of upheavals, dissensions in Middle East, you know. And the environment in which he came there, evolved, was, um, how should I say, um, predisposed to the evolution of Islam. We have it blending with their way of life, with their diet, their dress, and their prominent philosophers, and all of the thinkers around that era had an effect on the shape of Islam. Now what I'm gonna say is that religion, a great civilization, emerged from um, a state of unrest in which people try to emerge with an uh, organized way to live in the social, in the private life. And this has given birth to the, um, we should say, the occurrence of the mind, the mental state, the mind. The mind evolves when there's a struggle to think, to understand, to survive, to, uh, you know, um, cope with the challenges in the material, the physical world, the mind evolves. And it turns to God, it turns to God. And from these ancient civilizations, we have great foundation stone, and some people say the encounter with beings, with supernatural entities who guided and shaped early humanity. Now this has uh, given birth to people, a civilization that have operated on these principles and laws, carrying the people through um, seasons of experiences in the mental strata, in the spiritual strata, which afforded them creativity and um, log logistics logical methodologies to make the physical life easier. Then time passes and people lose all touch with um, practical spirituality. It degenerated into cults, into sects, into beliefs and superstitions and dogmas. And ever so again, nature and the creation has given birth to other species and geniuses in the field of metaphysics, mysticism. And they would again and again ignite the torch of humanity, saving it from um, doomsday, from perishing, from dissolution, from annihilation. So we have great souls that come and ignite life impulses, the fever to live, the fever to enjoy, you know. And in fact, in the um, system of religion, they describe hells or narakaras, and they describe heavens or the lokas, swarg loka. And according to many of the ancient texts, they say they are heavens and they are hells. Some say it corresponds to your mental state. You know, if you're living in a hellish situation, you suffer, you bad luck, you're not prosperous, your energy in your system is so bad, it's so um, on towards unacceptable, you know. And in many cases, such people are regarded as kind of like um, asuric, demonic, right? But anti-human, what... Uh, what I find many of these people in my personal encounter in Guyana, they seek 
to get up to the top also they want to reach they want to enjoy what highly evolved beings enjoy enjoy they see how the evolved beings highly developed souls live they do not know how these souls acquire these merits or these blessings that they enjoy in the material world through struggles in the previous life through effort through dedication but they themselves also want to enjoy it and they do all means of ways and to get there you know but um one of the same ways is to accept where you are what you are and to inculcate spiritual disciplines keep spiritual company some people in their activism in their material activism they are able to create churches they're able to create print books they're able to do a lot of activity in the material world and so bring about a renaissance a new change in the society and these very demonic people the energy is diverted and given to spirituality they can do a lot of work so god himself says he didn't come for the weak for the good who are already established but he came for the sinners so they have preference they have privileges now my personal encounter is very difficult sometimes dealing with people who do not know about the spiritual realms the spiritual experiences it's very difficult and even if you tell them sometimes they don't believe you they make mockery they laugh call it church by and um all kind of funny names you know but in the end is that when you start to get the results they want it they feel very offended they feel very um you know clash you know and they start to live they will try to live this and try to live you know um um manageable way in a proper way to get those benefits also so but it fact is that um not everybody is the same you know some people born some religious people they come from a family or very like the prophets and the saints the family have a part of background generations of cultivation of growing in the spiritual realms that pass down to the prophet or to the new present new generation that has yielded a prophet or a genius so in life many people they want to start a business and go through many generations 300 400 years before that business become internationally renowned and famous but it's somewhere along the line it starts small in many of the cases so it is that sometimes you live with unspiritual people and it's not very easy especially if you're in the minority you know many of the great enterprises the great souls and spirits are evolved beings who came from higher dimensions and so on the scientists the successful people and they have to work in adverse condition coming to the earth plane is something very challenging they do not want to come but they come and they work and they adapt and many of them suffer you know because you have to work on especially during the culture gauge or the dark which people do not understand you their behavior their habits their addictions their um sensitivity their um tastes and appetites are not spiritual what the hindu calls they do not have the spiritual samskaras or the qualities to reach to the highest they're just beginners for the rest of their life they're just learners and students but we have to start somewhere no no lie about that in fact i find that people who are now doing spirituality in a region that is unfamiliar with the spiritual culture they become pioneers because they create the awareness for certain ethics like celibacy the awareness for honesty the awareness for um discipline the awareness for detachment and courage and um this kind of rom- romanticism you know so um somewhere along the line there are people who are gardeners of the earth they're what planting seeds they're watering it and then they nurture the plant until the planet can be a fruit and be fertile you know but the thing is that um they say that they are beings entities jinns negative forces that are poor meeting here you know they die in very harsh ways hard circumstances they're very vital people their spirit remain here after death and they influence weaker souls and weaker beings and cause problem in everyday life and so so they say if your mind is strong your spirit is strong you're influenced by angels and spirit beings positive beings 
and take you over you can become channels so hopefully if you want my message on this special day you want to be actually I'm not a Muslim fanatic right but Muslim has been proven to be as um, a growing a fast competitive religion is the second largest religion in the world Hinduism is the third is Christianity is a force and Islam has done its own work and is fighting for survival Though they believe in converting people by force, I don't think it is the, mo the best way in religion, you know. Though in um, a non-Marxism, for example, they say bring people to the path of spirituality using the chakra or the warrior quality. But it's not the end all and be all of it, you know. We have to leave people to grow and come gradually, you know, influencing them with the level of people that they are most familiar with and they can cope with and handle with and rap with. What causes the problem if you're aiming for a higher level when you're not ready for that level? Causes a lot of setbacks and problems. It's better if you work where you are and try to be with the people that are at your equivalence. And gradually, you know, you will get um, the universe and nature will help to bring you in touch on the pros with prosperity, with harmony, peace, and a way direction. Everybody has the right to see away the direction and to find footage and foundation in a material life. Their life should be happy, should be prosperous. The Hindu say this is a cultural gauge, the age where materialism or people based on animalistic tendencies are in predominance and those with spiritual and mental awareness are viewed as weaklings. They are viewed as mediocre and since they don't have the support and the um, association, the network to do their work, they are in minority, they cannot, you cannot see the glaring power of the mental and the spiritual level, the psychic phenomena. So in this way we think that more people should come to God, more people should get techniques how to practice properly. Some people start from the books, eventually a teacher would come and help them. I personally started from books. When I started to do yoga, though I came from a Hindu roots, Hindu family, grew up doing religious pujas and this kind of thing. I attended religious functions and grew up in the Hindu atmosphere, but still, when it comes to yoga, mantras, asanas, the fast technique, the practical techniques, I learned from books and eventually the teacher would come and find you when you, at every level, you know. So people have to make an effort by themselves rather than if you're living, cause problem to other peoples because you're not up to their standard or you cannot um, get the merits that they have. What is it? You have to earn your own merits through karma. The Chinese call it cultivation. Through many lifetimes, through many eons, many cycles, you cultivate, cultivate, practice the dharma the laws of virtues, you practice it until your body change, your mind change, your soul change, your spirit change, your environment change, everything changes. You know, um, there was a story with a man who went on the devotional path. He was singing all the time, Om Namah Shiva, Om Namah Shiva, Jai Gurudev, Jai Gurudev, no, Namo Bhagavati So He was chanting and chanting and chanting. And then one day, uh, he was in a boat, you know, and he, he saw corpses floating all over in the Ganges, there were many corpses, and he said, why are there so many corpses here? So the boatman, he had a bandage over his eyes and he was puzzling, you usually have to pay him a coin when you're crossing this river. He said, those bodies are your own incarnation. So this man was chanting and chanting, he didn't realize he had his body fall off and he got a new body and he got a new body and he was in the river of life, this boat of, um, this boat of journey, you know, and he didn't realize until his mind came back to body consciousness, to art consciousness, and he saw reality as it is. He was now an evolved being, a spiritual being. So um, this is how it is, you have to keep doing little, little as you can. Some people are fast, they can do the fast way. Like Vishwam Mitra, they're great tapas wins, great spiritual genius, people with great dynamism and effort and will. Some people go the gradual way, slow, slow, slow. But as one Japanese Zen master was saying, some people they run very fast up the mountain and as soon as they reach the top, they slide down and come 
come skating down bram with one fall you know so it's just that you work little bit by little bit you work gradually gradually until you reach the final summit you know you don't come fighting and getting up all the way like that you know people had some people many in great incarnation they work for many lifetimes plenty lifetimes you know it's a gradual process it's not a right away process and enlightenment doesn't come just like that you got to prepare the body you got to prepare the mind you got to prepare everything got to come properly you know if you don't have the right environment how are you going to do the work how are you going to do god's work it's something very retarding and frustrating when you have neighbors and peoples who can't see eye to high and help you in your journey rather they want help but you know the effect they have on you and so on spirituality and the practice of spirituality is a very delicate and sensitive person. There's a lot of changes happening in the body, in your mind. You have new experiences for different situations. Your mind and power start to manifest and so on. So it's a very rewarding and honorable thing to live in, in the art plane and experiencing these various festivals from great world religions and seeing people and entities and beings who are treading the path and who probably know more than we do but they're just silent you know that's the best language in spirituality silence until you can communicate without words namaskar harion salam